I'm Alan T. Trith, Chronicler of the Elseworld Corporate, and this is Crusader of Cincy for the Sega Genesis, also known as Ragna Cincy and Soleil. For the purposes of this Let's Play, I will be using the Soleil translation, as there are some dialogue differences between this and the standard North American version that I prefer. That's the story up till now. Kind of Undertale-esque, so to speak. Uh, wouldn't surprise me to hear if Toby Fox played this. Okay, a spot and a name. Got plenty of spots. I think the default name is Corona, but uh, for some reason I always call him Benjamin. I think that's the name of the main character from uh, Mystic Quest, or Final Fantasy USA. <laughs> Okay, yeah, E. No, oh, that's fine. Okay, game opens on her birthday. And she'll mention it in a minute, but in this kingdom, when you're 14 years old, you're expected to go out and fight monsters. That's just the way it is. Okay. Get your father's sword. Let's see, he lost his life in battle. You never really find out anything about that. Okay. Here's the interesting thing. Nothing. The game will not progress. You can't leave the house. But you basically have to talk to everybody and then just wait a second. Already talked to Pico, our little friend, Bull, named Billy in the American version, who's eh, kind of a jerk. And our childhood friend, whose name escapes me. Alice. I always like the name Alice. Alice and Dorothy always stuck in my head. I used to confuse the Wizard of Oz and uh, Alice in Wonderland all the time as a kid. Okay, we're all going to go see off the hero Eamon. He's going to start his big journey because he finished all the training courses and is getting his holy sword. But I'm going to see my dog first because he's more impressive. 
Okay, as you can tell, this is a very Zelda-esque game. Uh, overhead view, basically sword slashing. We'll find abilities throughout the game that help you get further into it. I gotta say though, I always liked this a lot better than Zelda. I mean, I guess it'd be more fair to compare this to Link to the Past, because the first Zelda is kind of a, well, I never particularly cared for it. It's not that it's a bad game, but there's a lot of wondering, a lot of guesswork. And, uh, I don't know. I'm a writer. I like stories. And the story of this one's pretty solid. It's also a lot shorter, though. But that works in its favor, because it does kind of hit the narrative a lot better. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, Bull. I don't know how they went from Bull to Billy. Bull is, I guess Bull's kind of a weird name. Okay. That's the king. He has donkey ears. I think the American version does come out and just call him King Midas. Hmm, you'll excuse me, I have to drink a little soda to keep my mind percolated. Okay. It's pretty amazing he, met, he recognizes you by your father's sword, but eh, okay. Fourteen years old, he, okay, we're gonna go get trained. There's some stuff we can explore in the castle, but we'll need abilities to get anything useful, so we'll come back later. Well, and nice to know that Pico was the only one decent enough to stop and uh, wave us off. Thank you, Bull and Alice. Uh, pick up your sword, boy, because now is the time to fight. So many things that will come back to this is... Really, the way this story is kind of set up is... Rather ingenious, I thought. Also, this game isn't too difficult, though, so... A good one to recommend to young kids getting into this sort of game. Let's see, the plaza. The plaza is kind of a playground area. Uh, we'll be visiting there a bit later. He's basically picking on... He'll pick on you if you say you've been there, saying you're still a kid. But remember that. <laughs> Okay, first goal is to get past the basic course, but we also have a secondary goal. We need to get at least 20 gold coins. Fortunately, in the vein of Zelda games and adventure games in general, people seem to like throwing all their gold in grass. Okay, these switches you hit with your sword, and they do good things or bad things. See a lot of them throughout the quest. Okay. Oh, got some chests here. The training course, at least. Chests always have money. Crates, uh, more often not have nothing, but sometimes they'll have a either coin or apple in them. Apple being your principal health. Yeah, sorry, I got a kind of shrub grind here, but uh, like I said, I'll need 20 coins. I can't. You actually cannot progress in the game until you get the ability to throw your sword. And to get that, we will need 20 coins. Let's see, yeah, elastic bands, those will figure into a lot of puzzles later on. Very bouncy. Okay. This guy, yeah, new train. Your tips about this place? Yeah, there are three courses here. There's the basic course, which we're on right now. There's the jump course, which requires the ability to jump. And then there's the final course, which you need to be able to do a running jump. Now, we can only do the basic right now. But we will be back for the others. If you get all three of them, you'll get a better sword. Basically one that's twice as strong as the one you've got now. It's not required, but it helps. Besides, going through the tutorial levels, there's actually some uh, power-ups hidden in there. Uh, health upgrades. Health upgrades in this game take the form of golden apples. Oh, some of the grass. But there's a crack later about yet another hero who has to basically do lawn work. 
Okay. There, we got all the coins we need. Pull it back. Avoid the flamethrower. Slide down the slippery salt. We'll see a lot of those later. Head back up this way. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do any more grinding for money because honestly, there's not a lot in this game you can buy. But okay, that's enough of that. That's actually from the tile set Hot Daisy, a place we'll visit much later. When we have more abilities and are better capable of defending ourselves. Oh, bunny! Excuse me. We gotta be getting close to the end of this now, I think. Ah, huh, one of the hit switches. This one makes. Let's see. Bees! The nice thing about bees, though, is that every time you kill one, they'll drop gold. Every time. So if you had trouble getting money up to this point, one problem, one downside in this game, unlike Zelda, you can't use your sword to grab money. Oh well. You get the coin. Come on. Okay. Let's see more hit switches. Most of the hit switches in the game are useful. Though. They'll open up areas like this, allow you to pass, make shortcuts. Okay, dodge around the spikes. I think we're right there at the end now. Oh yeah, it doesn't say this anywhere, but to pass these gates, you just sit there for a second. There. And there's a the bronze bundle. Okay, we're going to collect an apple from here. There should be one here. Might be two here. Uh, not so lucky. Oh, there we go. And filled up. Sweet. Okay. That's the training done. Time for us to go hit our first dungeon area. Dahlia Valley. Which we will do next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to actually learn how to throw my sword. Oops, sorry about that. Let's just run back real quick and take care of this. Yep, just in the front of Reflegia's skull. Laos. He's an expert sword thrower, and for 20 bucks, he'll teach you the art of sword throwing by saying abracadabra. This is a key mechanic in this game, so you can't get around without it. Okay. Now we're ready to go. <laughs> so we'll head back to Dolly Valley. And there we go. Okay. Now, going for real this time.